Welcome to the second of the MapleSec Satellite Sessions. I'm Jim Love, the CIO of ITWC. These sessions were designed to carry on the conversation started at our flagship security event held last October during Cybersecurity Awareness Month and to build community. They're designed to design built to include a workshop that allows on cam or camera on sessions for the personal interactions that we have all been missing for the past 14 months. The first satellite was held in February and it featured panels and a workshop on new cybersecurity threats. It was a great session and is available for on demand viewing at maplesec.ca. The next session is August 5th and it will focus on cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. Details and registration information are now on the platform. But today's 100 minute session is all about security awareness training. And we'll find out how to offer engaging and informative learning along with real world phishing simulations to transform end users into cyber heroes. Now today's mini conference is sponsored by Terra Nova Security and we thank them for making this session possible. Please, if you want to thank them, check out their downloadable material right underneath me. The entire series is supported by the Ontario Affiliate of Women in Cybersecurity, by the CIO Association of Canada, proud member, and the CIO Strategy Council, proud member, and the Canadian Internet Registration Authority, CIRA. Now, we hear a lot about the technologies used to protect against the growing cyber threats. Ransomware gangs, DDoS attacks, third-party attacks. But the real strength and the potential real weakness for any security initiative in any organization is people. So how are we doing on that front? How effective is cybersecurity training for employees? Well, not very, if a number of recent surveys are correct. Last year, a massive phishing simulation organized by Terra Nova Security revealed that roughly 70% of global users working in the public sector were still likely to enter password credentials after clicking on a malicious email. In their second year of the, the Gone Fishing Tournament, great name, approximately 20% of global employees were still quick to click on phishing email links. That's a significant increase from the 11% figure posted after the inaugural tournament in 2019. It's an alarming sign since most of the tournament's participants had already had a phishing simulation. Now those results were similar to a recent study by Talent LMS which surveyed 1,200 American workers, more than two-thirds of whom had taken some form of cybersecurity training and 61% of the participants failed the test. Now you only had to get four out of seven multiple choice questions right to pass. Fewer than one in one percent got all seven questions correct. And interestingly, those who worked in the IT field were the worst performers. Only 17% passed the test. The lesson? We have to do better. And that's why it's so timely to have this session and to have it sponsored by Terra Nova Security, a Canadian-based company that has become a global leader in cybersecurity awareness with programs spanning over 10 million users. We're going to hear from their CEO, Lise Lapointe, in just a minute. But first, I want to make sure that you, the audience, knows how to get the most from today's sessions. Right now, I'm speaking to you, to you from what we call the Jumbotron. This is, this is the main viewing screen. To the right, you'll find a messenger box. Now, there are lots of other interesting things on the platform you should check out. There are interesting downloads and the opportunity to sign up for Cybersecurity Today. Cybersecurity Today is our award-winning podcast, which has over 2 million downloads since inception. But pay special attention to this messenger box. It, it'll provide key bits of interesting information throughout the show. It'll also display questions. Right? If you go to your Twitter account and you ask a question there using the hashtag, hashtag MapleSec, it will magically appear in the messenger box. But there's more to get you involved. 
After a couple of presentations, we will have a workshop where we'll randomly break you, the community, into three small groups for an interactive discussion with your peers about one of three training scenarios. M much more about that later. But right now, it is my pleasure to introduce Lise Lapointe. Lise began her career as a teacher before unexpectedly transitioning to the field of IT training more than a quarter century ago. By her own admission, her love of helping organizations train their users to become cyber heroes is rooted in how positive the impact is on people's cybersecurity acumen. Founder and CEO of Terra Nova Security, and not to mention an ITWC 2020 Top Women in Cybersecurity honoree, she's not just a role model for other women looking to make a difference, but an inspiration to any business leader in any industry. Lise? Hi, thank you, Jim. Thank you for joining us today. Terranova Security is thrilled to be part of the Maple Sec series and discuss the importance of building a security awareness training program that is diverse and inclusive for all end users. Terranova Security defines diverse, inclusive security awareness training as an overall experience that is created and implemented with all users in mind. It's a human side of security. To ensure inclusivity, training development must take the following into consideration. When we develop courses, we have to think about a lot of different things, such as accessibility standards, compliance, so all employees have access to training, mobile responsive training content to allow users to complete training on their preferred device, different content formats that reach different types of audiences, micro-modules, nano-videos, nano-modules, infographics. Also, we need to be a multilingual, have multilingual training courses to ensure users can learn in their preferred language. Multilingual audio narration for training courses for users that prefer to listen. Also, multilingual text captions for users that prefer to read. Image featuring also individuals of all ages, nationalities, genders, cultural backgrounds to make sure users can recognize themselves in the training content. Role-based training also helps to offer specific training options to individuals in a variety of roles and industries. A personalized experience to align with your organization's brand. Easy to understand language to facilitate the cybersecurity best practice learning process for all users. High quality interactive learning activities, quizzes, games to create a fun learning environment and improve knowledge retention. All these factors play a part in fulfilling your organization's obligation as a good corporate citizen and delivering the best possible security awareness training experience. Diverse, inclusive security awareness training starts with the right solution. Training opportunities must be widely accessible, flexible, and accommodating to all users and their schedule, and take a various learning preference into account. Forcing in users to endure boring, ineffective content won't help you reach your behavior change and related cybersecurity goals. But diversity and inclusivity also apply to the organization as a whole and its approach to information security. It must invite a variety of voices, opinions, and ideas to the security awareness table. It must be willing to explore new training avenues with an eye toward innovation. Without this mindset, growth possibilities are very limited. By building a diverse, inclusive training program, you can take advantage of many benefits. Stronger data protection with improved employee knowledge. You need to do phishing simulations. This is crucial to the success. Enhance organizational reputation that can boost employee retention, help you hire the best talent, and establish your brand as an industry leader. Great revenue increase due to minimizing cybersecurity risk and lower costs associated with data breaches. A growth-centric outlook that comes with investing in your talent and focusing on long-term innovation instead of putting out cybersecurity fires all the time. The human element is not solely your technical infrastructure. It's the key to secure sensitive information. 
Awareness training should empower employees and give them both the knowledge and the confidence they need to ensure compliance, privacy, and data security. By taking steps to ensure your security awareness training program is diverse and inclusive for all users, you'll facilitate the behavior change process. And as a result, you will maximize your cybersecurity ROI. After 20 years leading the charge at Terranova Security, I'm confident that this recipe for success can help any organization implement a security awareness training program that will motivate users and empower cybersecurity leaders to train the next wave of cyber heroes. Back to you, Jim. Thank you, Lise. With organizations so focused on the expanding attack surface and the details of their individual plans, I think the importance of diversity can be overlooked. Thanks for bringing it up. Now, I'm just, just bear with me for a second here. I'm just gonna send this out. Hashtag MapleSec, okay. Um, so I just sent out a tweet with the question, how effective are your organization's current cybersecurity initiatives? Have you learned anything uh, during this MapleSec, hashtag MapleSec satellite event that you'd apply in your organization? Now, I'd love to see your answers. And a selection will appear in the messenger box. Oh, here's one coming up now, okay. Ah. Our organization is doing okay with cybersecurity. The tech teams are on top of security. If issues arise, they address them quickly by following their standard operating procedures, SOP. Okay, should have done hashtag SOP. We could probably do better with training of the staff, though. IT hasn't made as conscious an effort as they could. At least that's what we're learning through today's hashtag MapleSec event. Good stuff. Good stuff. Keep tweeting. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce an expert panel that will build on Lisa's remarks and share real life examples of effective cybersecurity awareness initiatives. If the panel is successful, you'll be able to walk away with a list of best practices you can implement with your staff and perhaps breathe easier if they participate in a phishing simulation. The moderator for the panel is Kelvin Coleman. He's part of the National Security Alliance. Kelvin has two decades of experience in cybersecurity with posts at the White House, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, and in the private sector. He's conducted cybersecurity training in 49 states and has held briefings with tech giants and politicians alike. As the Alliance's executive director, he's responsible for facilitating strategic partnerships and alliances. Kelvin met with our panel a few days ago and here are the highlights of a very spirited conversation. Thank you very much, Jim. I'm Kelvin Coleman. I'm executive director and a chief executive officer of the National Cybersecurity Alliance. You can have the most sophisticated cybersecurity technology on the market, but if your people are ill-trained or ambivalent about the cybersecurity threats you're facing your organization, the future of your organization is in significant danger. On this panel, you'll hear experts discuss what works and what doesn't as you try to create a, a team of cyber heroes. Every organization is different, so every plan has to be different. But as promised by the panel title, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about at least you know, five different areas uh, you can help shape a cybersecurity first culture. So uh, with that, we'll start with Ruth. Ruth, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing very well. My name is Ruth Godfrey. I am the Security Awareness Manager for British Columbia Hydro. Um, we are one of the largest power producers and uh, distributors of electricity, specifically in British Columbia. I think I'd like to talk to the question of what is the uh, biggest misconception about cybersecurity and awareness. And we find that people, when we mention in any tone the word training, uh, people roll their eyes. They get very frustrated. But I think with security awareness, there's an opportunity. I think we as professionals or those who get to deliver the program and the training, that there's an opportunity to provide awareness training in a way that doesn't have to be standard, the click 
through. I think that we can make it very exciting engaging. And once you know your demographics, you can even target that with the type of uh, training that you're going to provide. So maybe gamification or something that would appeal. But that comes over time. Really great to have you here today, Ruth. Uh, Kim, let's go to you next. Introduce yourself and certainly give us that big misconception from your point of view. Yeah, absolutely. I have been with TELUS Security for nine years now, and I have a unique view in that we um, have a national cybersecurity professional services practice, so we see people at all different places. And I'm really excited about the shift in the last couple of years from technology-based security as the, as the solution to this more holistic and collaborative approach in the organization. Um, and I think that's also where some of the misconceptions come from, that security awareness is part of a compliance checklist, uh, whether it be part of a security framework that you're trying to to, uh, adhere to or, um, you know, become compliant with and and get that certification. And I think that's where you see um, organizations go off the rails with their cybersecurity program um, when they treat it as this one time or once every six months. But it really needs to be part of their every day and an ongoing thing as opposed to a point in time. Wow. I look forward to hearing more uh, from you, Kim, on, on that. Uh, you know, very, very uh, a serious topic there. Kevin, let's go to you. Introduce yourself and maybe give us an idea of the bis- biggest misconception from your viewpoint. Uh, thanks for, uh, for having me. My name is Kevin McGee, and I am the Chief Security Officer for Microsoft Canada. I think uh, the biggest misconception about security awareness uh, really comes down to our side. It's the IT folks. It's the security practitioners. We tend to see the user as the problem, as the challenge to overcome, as the thing to fix. But ultimately... You know, going back to first principles, none of our jobs or none of the technology would exist without the user. Our whole purpose is to enable that user. So how do we safely enable that that user? How do we work with that user to really make security as seamless as possible as part of their job? Yeah, yeah, great point. Last but certainly not least, uh, Kathy, any misconceptions? And of course, let us know who you are. <laughs> okay. I'm Kathy McDonald. I've been doing cyber awareness training since early 2000. Um, I'm a retired police officer from Calgary Police Service. I instruct at the University of Calgary and do open source investigations uh, through Toddington International. And I have my own security awareness training company. Talking about misconceptions, uh, Calvin, and with the rest of the group, I, I agree 100%. I think, you know, cyber awareness training can be exciting. It doesn't have to be quite so boring. Um, make it simple, make it direct, make it important, have important messages and continuous. So, you know, just mix it up and make it somewhat interesting and exciting by humanizing it. So, uh, Kathy, your experience on the law enforcement side is going to be yeah. invaluable during this conversation. Kathy, let's start with you. What are some proven ways to engage as it relates to cybersecurity? I think that these new virtual platforms have given a new opportunity to cyber awareness training. Um, You can invite people in, you can invite people within the company into the, into the conference call, you know, the, the CEO and the CISO and, even people from the IT security team and just share a bit of information uh, from even a personal and a a practical standpoint that people and employees can use to take home to help safeguard their families and their network. Uh, Kevin, how about you, my friend? Uh, Some proven ways to engage as it relates to cybersecurity. I think it's really important not just to do the training, but really Tone from the top is what really matters mm-hmm. because you can have the best training program imaginable. But if really, you know, the folks above you in the organization aren't, aren't following it and saying, do as I say, not as I do, then it won't trickle down as part of the culture. So this needs to be from the boardroom right to the server room. Um, a great way to really demonstrate that in my uh, mind is to do tabletop exercise. It's not only great security awareness learning um, uh, technique, but also really can demonstrate how engaged and involved we are and can learn about, you know, how we respond to things before they actually happen. So take something ripped from the headlines, an attack that happened to another organization, tabletop it at the board, at the 
DC level, at the director level, right down to the help desk level and say, how would we respond? Let's, let's role play this out and see what, what we really learn. It's fascinating what you do learn and, and uh, find those little holes in your organization or whatnot as well. But when uh, the staff sees the senior leaders or the managers actively participating and prioritizing these sessions, it really says more than any uh, email you can ever send out that the, this is important or a poster you can put up with an exec. Uh, active participation tone from the top is, is definitely the key. That is so important. And your point about tabletops, I always looked at tabletops like the five hour, five hour power drink. They come in these <laughs> little cans that, but they provide so much. Uh, you know, Kim, uh, let, let's let's uh, come to you in terms of some proven ways, uh, cybersecurity, you know, t- the engagement piece there. Another one I would say is context. Give people mm. context uh, and uh, help them understand their role, other people's role, and how they impact the organization's security. There's, there's nothing more important in doing your work and understanding that it has an impact and understanding you know, how that translates into other things for other people. So I'm always a big believer in give people the context, give them the, that, that gives them the power to understand what they can influence in the organization. Ruth, some great suggestions so far, but I'm quite sure you have a nugget or two for us to uh, uh, think about here today. Any, any ideas as it relates to proven ways of, of engagement? Um, I think we've touched on it, and that is that to get to know your cyber team. In an organization, it can range from a security awareness professional like myself, or you're delivering uh, the, the program and also the uh, training, but uh, and sometimes the phishing um, exercises, which they get to know you, your name at least by, but um, Cyber involves a lot more people than just the face of an awareness program. Cybersecurity and awareness hits home as well. So what we're learning, those basic concepts um, can be applied at home. We can make a a virtual event uh, like a lunch and learn, only bring it uh, online uh, and talk about those things that that are really affecting our families and uh, at work uh, as well. Now, Kim, I'm going to come back to you though, because someone is going to say, well, how are you doing in this area? How do you know if you're successful or not? So what metrics do we use, Kim, uh, to measure engagement? I think there's traditional metrics. Um, so, you know, what's your click-through rate and how, is that, you know, trending down? Um, are you increasing the complexity of those exercises and still seeing those results? Those are numbers and they're, they're measurable. Um, I think that there's also ones that are maybe not part of the platform, but, you know, are you noticing an increase in people reporting? Uh, thank you very much. Kathy, let's start with you in terms of establishing that awareness culture and that initiative. Uh, the size of company really matter? It depends upon uh, many factors, mind you, about the, the type of company and the, the risk factors involved. But no, the size doesn't matter. And uh, I think it's really important. It, it is a culture and it's uh, something that is really tough. But as a person that wants to build that security awareness, you want to motivate your employees to want to help to protect. And that's the tough part. You want to, them to have that desire to report and to, to be really diligent. I almost want someone to say, uh, no, yeah, well, yes, size matters, right? So I think we all will say, no, size doesn't matter, you know. Uh, but then I am going to pose it to you, though, because uh, you're one of the, you know, largest, at least most profitable companies on earth. Um, does size really matter when it comes to cybersecurity awareness? Kevin, do you disagree with Kathy? I almost want some disagreement here. All right. I'll just disagree for, for uh, to make you happy. <laughs> Okay, size, it does matter. Like the smaller you are, you you tend to think you're not a target uh, because I'm small and significant. Um, I work with a lot of startups that really think, hey, we're too small, we're, we're insignificant. Um, you're actually probably a, a bigger target at that play, uh, time in developing your organization because you haven't built out those uh, facilities. You haven't built out those processes and whatnot, and you have more to lose. And like any good moderator, I agree with you both. So, uh, <laughs> so coming to our second category today, gamification. Uh, Kathy, I'm going to come back to you because I think, you know, you're 
certainly expert in many areas, but you know, can answer this for us. What are some of the efforts to gamify security awareness? Well, I remember back in 2008 and 2009, I had the opportunity to go to the National Cyber Forensic Training Alliance in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And they are uh, right next door to Carnegie Mellon and Scilab. And I believe that, uh, well, Scilab actually developed anti-phishing fill. And I think it's still around. It's a great game. pretty fun and animated. But I think that um, the whole principles of gamification are the same as real world in Mm -hmm. that uh, it makes you anti-fragile. You know that people are watching, assessing you, they're documenting you. I really think it it helps with that anti-fragility these days. Do you think produce long-term results or is this sort of a short-term fad or fix that we're going through in terms of gamification and security awareness? Well, I think it definitely complements the overall program and really supplements in certain areas. But yeah, you need to have a comprehensive uh, security awareness program. And I think gamification is a, is a great tool as well. Awesome. Thank you very much. You know, Ruth, come to you right now. What is the best practice for someone who violates the company's clicking policy? Well, there are many thoughts on that. I think that depending on the culture of your organization, I think it certainly determines your approach. Mm-hmm. Um, in At BC Hydro, um, a conversation um, is typically the first line of response to someone who clicks or is a repeat clicker, let's say within a phishing exercise. I think that that's a good start. Ruth, thanks so very much because um uh, when you talk about the carrot or the stick, you know, it seems like carrot works most of the time, right? Uh, so, Kevin, what are some of the steps we can take to improve their behavior in this area, in the in the category of escalation? Yeah, I talked to a lot of boards. I talked to a lot of CEOs, and they'll ask me, how do I know if I have a good security culture? And really, that's a great point, not just to teach that person who clicked on that link, you know, uh, a lesson or, or something about security awareness. It's a great point to learn because when they clicked on that link, what did they do next? What happens in the next minute really defines your security culture. If they try to hide it, or if they try to cover it up, or they pay the ransom so they don't get in trouble, or they fear retribution, that gives you one answer about your security culture. If they feel empowered that they can raise their hand and ask for help or be part of the solution, that tells you much more. Kevin, as you, as you talk, what was screaming in my head is not the mistake most of the time, it's the response to the mistake, right? That yeah. makes it worse, uh, which is so great. Uh, Kim, uh, this, we're still in category escalation. Last question for you here. And Kevin talked about it in his introduction in terms of leadership, uh, but how can you tie cybersecurity training to business objectives in order to secure buy-in from the organization's leadership? If you're talking to leaders and you really need them to understand why it's important that, like Kevin said, you have that top down, um, speak to them about the things that will impact their level. Give them the context at their level um, on, on where investing in employees understanding and being part of cybersecurity awareness, building that culture, understanding their role actually directly impacts the bottom line and productivity and how effectively an organization can serve its own clients. Kathy, a little challenge here. I'm going to put a little spin on the question uh, that, you know, Kim so expertly answered here, but how can we change behavior for repeat clickers instead of punishing them. Those kinds of people that um, are repeat offenders or maybe have offended in some way, in a big way, why not put them in charge of maybe organizing the next theme for Internet Safety Month or writing an article for the newsletter or maybe organizing the next Lunch and Learn? So give them a role that's an important role. They have a story that they can tell if they want to. And uh, it really comes from a place where um, they've learned. And uh, I think it's a positive way to overcome some, some of these problems that are repeat I I like it, Kathy. Make the car burglar the car salesman. (laughs) Transform your users into cyber heroes with dynamic online security awareness training from Terranova Security. Benefit from high quality training content that addresses current cyber threats, real world phishing simulations that test user knowledge, and a customizable experience that helps you achieve your goals. 
Strengthen your cybersecurity and ensure your data is protected. Visit TerranovaSecurity.com to find out more. Now we're gonna talk specifically about reg uh, recognition. Uh, you know, they say both in Canada and America that you can catch more flies with honey. Is that true when it comes to security awareness, Kevin? Um, you know, can you catch more flies with uh, honey than vinegar when it comes to cybersecurity awareness? So recognition is something I struggle with um, for mm -hmm. users and, and our teams. So I'll give you two quick answers on that one. How do you recognize, hey, yay, nothing happened? Um, it's really difficult. Uh, but there are other industries that have figured it out. If you think about the insurance industry, they've built in functions to reward uh, customers uh, by lower rates or whatnot. Um, so looking to other industries that are similar, that have similar challenges to find some ideas are great as well. The other thing is the security teams. If your security team is is involved in an incident and they, you know, solve the problem and whatnot, they can't, they can't talk to anyone about that. It's, it's private. I mean, how do you recognize them openly for uh, fighting off a cyber attack or, or doing something that, you know, was really critical to the, the uh, success of the business? So a lot of times, you know, even the cyber security response teams go unrecognized. So finding other ways with my team, what we do is uh, we do things like mentoring students where we can help them, uh, you know, uh, develop their career or uh, get started in the industry because I can recognize them for that. And it's a chance to uh, find a fulfilling way to really take those lessons learned and channel them for good as well. <laughs> it's amazing that you've been able to combine recognition with workforce development almost with the mentorship program, which is absolutely incredible. So uh, Ruth, same question, uh, you know, uh, is, it, is it true in cybersecurity awareness in terms of catching more flies with honey? I think it is. Uh, I, people love to be recognized for doing the right thing. Um, it's as simple as, you know, uh, numbers, like aggregated information, like a uh, last fishing exercise, you know, look at the ones that reported the fishing. Yes, there were those that that uh, failed the fishing exercise. And, and certainly they would have known um, about it. But really, the positive changes in how your employee base are recognizing that that's suspicious. That is what is going to reduce your risk mm -hmm. by reporting or by deleting. And I think if you don't acknowledge that, it just becomes another one of those exercises. And Kim, do you get better results by recognizing good behavior rather than focusing on correcting bad behavior? I think just to to expand on sort of what Ruth was saying about the metrics, I think you ce you celebrate it. You celebrate, you know, it it might seem silly if your click through rate went down two percent to celebrate, but the more you celebrate, one, it it speaks to the organization like this matters. They're talking about it. They're sharing it. I contributed to that. And let's face it, you know, if you start sharing metrics on, we're really proud that X number of people took this training or, or took this initiative to take this training. Well, as an employee, I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm going to go take the training. Like the, the competitive nature in me wants to make sure that I am part of that. Wow. Such wise advice. You know, uh, Kathy, I'm on the edge of my seat. want to ask you this one as well. Same one I just asked Kim. Because of your traditional law enforcement background, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being familiar mm -hmm. with the physical side of security as well, now the cyber, do you get better results by recognizing good behavior rather than focusing on correcting bad behavior? Again, your experience, this is going to be a good answer. <laughs> I think it's very important. And, you know, sometimes it's the people on the front line. They're the ones that are sometimes more under attack. They're the ones that are talking to more people. They see the vulnerabilities, they see the weakness, but sometimes they don't uh, have a, a process or a vehicle to, uh, to report. So allowing people that opportunity to report, um, maybe the people that are you know, using and collecting and disclosing that personally identifiable information that is so important to an organization, talk to them, find out what's going on. And then of course, if they come up with an idea or a vulnerability that helps the organization, build, um, you know, capacity and resilience, then reward them maybe an opportunity to attend a free conference or a discounted rate on a course. But better yet, have somebody in the IT security team, have them select somebody that's really made a difference in the company. Next question here, what are, you know, some good recognition programs that folks can uh, take away from our talk today? What are some good recognition programs, Ruth? I think um, cash. 
uh, and that may sound strange, but a certificate so that people can use it uh, to to purchase things or apply it, even going out for dinner. For us, that works. <laughs> you know, I don't think cash. Uh, well, yeah, that, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Kim. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, cash is king. Absolutely. I, I, um, I, I love that. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know what? I, I don't know of one specifically, but I do like Kathy's idea of like earn your way towards something like a professional development day or something like that. Kevin, any, any uh, awesome programs out there, you know, of? promotion. I mean, it's, it's one factor being cyber secure, but it should be one of those things that are really taken into account when you look at promoting someone to a more senior position. You know, are they doing a good job in this? Let's reward good behavior. Well, thank you for eliminating my last question, Kevin, because I was going to ask about should we tie cybersecurity training to promotions, but <laughs> thank you very much. For that. Like what all of you are saying, uh, very people focused. Uh, so any successful program needs champions. How do you find those champions across an organization? Uh, Kim, let's start with you. To have it truly ingrained as an organizational culture, you're you're looking for ambassadors that are from all business lines. So um, it would be really prudent to have them come together and all have their different viewpoints, whether they're from business, IT, security, HR, um, sales. Very intriguing thought there because organizations often look to security teams to lead awareness programs. Um, you know, as they are the data gatekeepers. Is that reasonable? I mean, do you think we should spread that out a little bit in terms of other people who can lead that for us? Yeah, I, I do think that you come to security for the expertise, just like if I was, you know, looking at a candidate to hire, I would go to a human resources or people in culture and ask them to provide some feedback. But I think that you truly need the ambassadors to be in the individual business lines and run it alongside. In terms of, you know, this question of do you need a, a champion? Um, is there any difference between a large organization and a small organization in terms of how you find those champions across an organization, Kevin? I think really what it doesn't matter the size of the organization in this case, it's, it's who you're listening to and who's advising you. So I would say the number one uh, thing you can do to really ensure the success is diversity. So how do we get all voices heard? That's not just lines of business, that's different backgrounds, ed educational age uh, groups, every uh, measure of diversity you can bring in. Awesome. Now, uh, just one question for each of you um, that we can sum this up. What is the one thing that each member of the audience uh, can take away and apply tomorrow to improve their organization's cybersecurity awareness effort. Don't be in a hurry uh, from a security awareness program or feeling that you have a successful program. Don't limit it to yourself. Don't be frustrated. Have your strategic objectives, goals, roadmaps uh, in place. And I think you'll find uh, it to be less frustrating. And also the urgency to be fully successful. Give yourself that, that, uh, that time because it does take time and resources. Kathy, please give us that one thing that people can walk away with uh, and apply tomorrow. I think that the IT security team has a lot to offer. If they could just go and introduce themselves to somebody an arm's length away from them, maybe in procurement or in supply chain management or in privacy, or even the maintenance person, go and introduce themselves to that person and say, you know, I would be willing to come to your department's next Zoom call for two minutes and share some personal and some practical cybersecurity uh, information and advice that might help safeguard your family and uh, your family's network at home. So that team has that ability. They have the knowledge, the background, and it gets them face-to-face -face and mingling more. And that face recognition is so important. Good old fashioned conversation. <laughs> so Kim, let, let's come to you in terms of what's the one thing we can uh, leave folks with today that they can apply tomorrow? We get really focused on KPIs and milestones and project-based deliverables and like when is success and when have we, and when you're talking about security and when you're talking about a security program and you're talking about a culture of security, there really actually is no end. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. Just celebrate the small goals and small wins, but you're never actually getting off of a journey of security. Wow. It's certainly a, a journey, not a destination, right? Exactly. exactly. Uh, Kevin, uh, you know, give us something that we can apply tomorrow. Every mistake, every challenge, every, um, you know, 
thing that really goes wrong. Anything is a chance to learn as well. So asking why, really understanding context, using empathy uh, really builds that trust that allows you to, uh, to not only teach, but also to learn as well. I have really, really enjoyed uh, this panel. And talking about a very technical area of cybersecurity, uh, we've talked mostly about people and relationships and conversations. Thank you so very much for being with us today. Really enjoyed being with my colleagues from Canada here today. Enjoy the rest of the conference, and we hope to see you soon face-to-face. Thanks, Kelvin. What, what a fabulous, fabulous panel. Uh, and remember, if, if you have any questions, you'll be able to ask them live at the workshop. That's, that's going to come up in about 12 minutes in there. But right now, we're going to get you some good advice on dealing with phishing attacks. Now, phishing attacks are the most common entry point to an organization by cyber criminals. And with the shift to remote work culture, cyber villains are going all out to take advantage of these new vulnerabilities. You can see this in the messenger box. Phishing attacks account for more than 80% of reported security incidents. So here to share some tips on how to defend against the newest phishing attacks is Theo Zafarakis. He's the Terra Nova Securities CISO. Theo? Welcome everyone to this session on how to protect your data against phishing attacks. In this session, we will address the human element of cybersecurity defense. All cybersecurity programs rely on technology, process, and people uh, to defend against uh, cyber threats. It's commonly known as the people, process, and technology triad. Uh, you're probably here because you have done everything in your power uh, in terms of implementing the latest technology and processes to mitigate against threats, but now have the challenging task ahead of you uh, of ensuring people become a strong people uh, pillar uh, of your program. Some survey data that we have uh, show that uh, people, individuals, uh, commonly believe that technology alone could defend them against social engineering and cyber threats. And we all know that is not the truth. Social engineering and uh, phishing attacks leverage technology to conduct an attack on the human element. 80% uh, of all the cyber attacks are phishing and affect a majority of organizations across the globe. Uh, phishing attacks uh, no, don't know any physical boundaries. They could happen from anywhere and could target anywhere around the world. As you could see, majority of the uh, breaches that have occurred were a result of uh, phishing. And uh, phishing messages, and especially email, are the number one way of delivering ransomware to organizations and users' computers. Also, what we have seen is that a majority of organizations, at least uh, those that are reported, uh, have been targeted by, or have even become victims of phishing attacks. We actually believe that these numbers may be higher because not all organizations report the fact that they have been a victim of a phishing or a cyber incident. Also, what we have noticed is that with uh, employees who are uh, conduct uh, a phishing simulation, uh, 30% uh, of the participants uh, will click uh, uh, on a phishing email uh, when it's the first time that they see a phishing simulation. That's a fairly concerning number, considering that the scenarios that are initially used for phishing simulations are low in complexity and fairly easy to detect. By low complexity, we mean that the number of the indicators are very high and the users should be able to recognize fairly easily that this is not a legitimate message and they should not click on uh, the specific links or provide any personal or password information on malicious websites. Here comes our 2020 Gone Fishing Tournament. We conducted this, this activity, this uh, global fishing simulation uh, back in October of 2020. And uh, the goal of the tournament was to assess users' knowledge and users' behavior when it comes to detecting and properly acting uh, when they see a phishing message. Uh, during this scenario, we used uh, the same template, the same scenario, uh, the same time frame uh, for all participating organizations. And some of these organizations uh, had awareness programs in place, others did not, others had simulation programs in place, and others did not. Uh, 
Uh, also, the scenario that was used during this uh, this event uh, was a scenario uh, that based on real world attacks. It was supplied uh, by Microsoft Corporation, and it was selected by Terra Nova Security Leadership Team to be uh, the scenario for this event. What made also uh, this scenario more complex and, and more difficult to detect was that both the email message uh, and the landing page uh, were uh, customized to display uh, the clicker's email address. So it made the scenario a lot more believable and encouraged participants to trust the message, to trust the website, and click on the scenario. What is concerning is that this scenario was selected out of uh, real-world attacks that the cyber criminals are using uh, to target individuals. In the results, we saw that almost 20% uh, out of the total participants uh, clicked on the scenario, clicked on the link uh, that they received in the email message. And, and that is very concerning, considering that means that one out of the five users uh, believed the message itself and we're willing to go uh, to the next step by clicking on the link. Uh, this is to be expected because what we've noticed is that a lot of users do not believe that there is a risk associated with clicking on links. Uh, they tend to click on links a lot more freely uh, because the actual risks associated with clicking on the link have never been communicated to them. Also, typically what we see is that uh, the majority of those users who click tend to go to the uh, full extent of, of the simulation or the attack and, and, and complete the scenario. In this case, we saw 13.4% out of the total recipients who submitted their password on the website, which actually represents almost 7 out of 10 clickers who completed the scenario. This is a lot higher than the average that we see, which is around 50% of clickers uh, submitted their credentials. Although it's very, uh, you know, uh, easy to understand that the, uh, both the email message and the landing website looked very authentic, looked very familiar. So users may have been fooled by the authenticity of the message. It's still not acceptable in 2021 for users to submit their credentials in a website that is not secured meaning it was, the, it was not, uh, the address did not proceed with HTTPS and there was no lock uh, in the address bar. Uh, it was totally an unsecure website and yet users went ahead and submitted their password on this unsecure website. Also in the gun fishing tournament, we were able to produce data by industry, by region, and also by organization size. Another piece of information that was very concerning was that the North America data was much higher compared to every other region that participated. In every case, both in the click rate with a 5 percentage points higher than the average of 19.8, and also in the submission rate with 18% uh, compared to the 13.4% of the uh, total recipients who submitted their password. And as in consequence, uh, the click to submission rate was also higher with 70% uh, out of the clickers who submitted their password. This also could be attributed that uh, the scenario was more relevant uh, to, to North American uh, at the time that it was sent. It was in the middle of a pandemic. A lot of people were working from home. Uh, so the, the, the lure was a lot more believable. Uh, but on the other side, um, uh, the European region had the lowest click rates. And it's hard to justify that because they were in a similar situation as us. We may believe this may be attributed uh, to the fact that Europe may be a little bit ahead of North America in terms of awareness and fishing simulations uh, due to the GDPR and other strict uh, privacy laws that had forced organizations to implement uh, strong programs uh, much more uh, than in the North American counterparts. What can organizations do in order for them to uh, better defend and better prepare their employees? You need to be able to build powerful and effective awareness training programs. You need to promote uh, the training throughout your whole organization, use high quality and engaging material, and make sure that the content is delivered at the native language of your participants. That's the best way uh, that the users will learn, understand, and retain the information. Also, the communications around uh, the cyber threats have to be continuous. Uh, cyber threats do not stop, uh, while well, awareness activities should not stop as well. Fishing simulations are a great tool to provide users the ability to practice what they've learned and exercise their skills in detecting phishing attacks. 
Uh, the users, when they receive a simulation, do not know if it's a test or a real attack. Yet we expect them to always behave the same and either report it or ignore it uh, and, and not click on a, a link or submit data on a website that looks suspicious. Also, phishing simulations give the users the opportunity to view the different scenarios that the attackers may be using based on the current events or the time of the year that is more relevant. So it's also very important to reinforce key messages throughout the year uh, using different activities such as uh, newsletters, bulletins, uh, employee portals, desktops, or any other resource that you have available at your disposal to communicate these key messages. Do you want to learn how to build a winning security awareness program? Whether you have a program in place or want to improve what you already have, join us at the upcoming workshop to obtain strategies and tips on how to build an effective awareness program that enables your users to become part of your cybersecurity defense strategy. Thank you. Thank you, Theo. Fantastic. Uh, now, if you're wishing you'd signed up your whole team for this event so they could hear those great tips firsthand, do not worry. Got you covered. Just send any interested individuals from your team or anyone else back to maplesec.ca and they can register to watch the whole show or any one of the panels individually. And now, we get to a part I've been looking forward to in the Satellite Summit here, the workshop. Now, this is an opportunity to gather in smaller groups and have some conversations. Remember conversations? And some conversations and to work together to solve a problem. To ensure that we have open and frank discussion, these sessions will not be recorded. So uh, today we're going to look at three different ways to build a security awareness program. In breakout room one, you're going to meet with Mathieu Alette and Martin Patinaud and you're going to learn how to design and implement a security awareness training program for the first time. Using chat, on-camera discussion for those who prefer it, you'll work together to set actionable, scalable goals and to build a campaign you could deploy to all your end users. Now, this dynamic duo will provide you expert guidance into the awareness training tips and you'll discuss best practices. That's breakout room one. Breakout room two, you'll create and launch a phishing campaign. Terra Nova's chief people officer, Jesse Karam, will lead the discussion and you'll get to explore different customizable aspects of Terra Nova's phishing simulation templates. You'll discuss everything from editing your phishing email and landing pages and getting the text right and changing various design elements. I am anxious to see what you come up with. And if you're randomly placed in breakout room three, there you'll meet Sophie Clement Cosino and Martin uh, Venditti, and you'll have the hands-on experience of building a security awareness training campaign for future quarters, including setting different themes, determining the topics and the duration, and setting the module formats for your users. Now, good thing we're randomly being placed in the sessions because I could never decide between them. They're all great. And, you know, you'll also receive, in addition to all this, a you'll walk through of important escalation, communication, and personalization tools organizations can leverage to ensure they maximize their security awareness ROI. Now, there's just one thing we need, just one favor from, I need one person in each workshop, workshop session to volunteer, take some quick notes. You're just going to report back like two minutes and report back to the full session. And let's make it three highlights of the discussion. So I just need one volunteer, three highlights of the discussion. And we'll regroup in 25 minutes. Click the link. The link should be just down there. And you'll be teleported to a general meeting room. Now, from there, you'll be put into one of three sessions. Now, unfortunately, you can't assign or reassign you to a specific workshop, but you'll, you'll all come back as a community and you'll hear reports back from the, 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 the different groups. Now, we'll finish this event from inside the workshop area. That's where you'll be transported to when you click that button right below me. Now, don't worry. If you haven't been able to fully explore the platform, it will remain active for you to browse and download any materials you've missed. Push the button 
and I'll see you inside. Ready? Okay.